Hello. A long, long time ago, but not in a galaxy far, far away, as part of my GCSEs, I made my own light pen for my Amiga. But sadly, I don't have that anymore. I think I pulled it apart many years ago just for the parts. But I do have one of these. Oh, and one of these. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at these light guns and light pens and see how they work. So, light guns and light pens. The ones I have are both Trojan branded. Now, there were several different Trojan light guns for different systems, and I'd assume they'd be wired slightly differently. This one I have is for the Amiga. The light pen, however, well, I'm not really sure what system that's for. So, let's take a closer look. They both operate in the same kind of way. In the case of the light gun, you can use it to hit things on the screen, whereas with the light pen, you need to physically touch the pen to the screen. Some of them have a button too, but this one doesn't. Now, if you've used one of these devices before, then I'm sure it's no surprise to you that I'm not using it with an LCD screen. I'm using a CRT, and that's very, very important. It's got nothing to do with picture lag or anything like that. It's due to how these devices actually work, and the clue is in their name. The CRT picture, whilst looking solid, is actually flickering really fast. Well, flickering isn't really the right word. Why do we get this flicker? Well, without getting into too much detail, the CRT, or cathode ray tube, crudely shown here, accelerates a beam of electrons towards the front of the glass, where it hits a layer of phosphor on the inside which then glows briefly. Using a set of coils to generate an electromagnetic field, one for horizontal and one for vertical, these coils can cause the beam to deflect in the X or Y axis across the tube surface. By moving this beam from left to right, a single row or scan line is drawn. Once it reaches the right hand edge, it very quickly jumps back to the left and starts the next row. Once it gets to the bottom of the screen, it jumps back to the top and starts again. Because of the way we perceive images, and with persistence of vision, we see a complete picture. However, with the wrong camera settings, filming a CRT can actually be very flickery due to the shutter speed of the camera not aligning with the refresh of the CRT. If I slow the recording of the CRT down a little, you can start to see what I'm talking about. You can now see that the picture is being drawn from the top to the bottom, and on the PAL system, this happens 50 times a second. Borrowing a small segment from the slow-mo guys, you can see this effect in more detail, here at 2,500 frames per second. And now here again, slowed to 146,000 frames per second. You can see how each line is made up. Why is this important? Well, you can't see it, but at any one time, the vast majority of the CRT screen is actually black or off, not emitting any light at all. Now, imagine if you put a light sensor onto a specific spot on the screen. When the CRT beam passes it, that sensor will, for a very short time, detect the beam, and it can send a digital pulse to the computer. The computer is currently generating the signal used to draw the picture, so it already knows the exact position the beam will be on the screen. By storing the beam position at the time that the sensor saw it, you know exactly where the sensor is on screen. And that's how light pens work. You can see one of these light pens being used in the film Die Hard 2, although I'm not entirely sure if that's real or whether that's just special effects in this case. Now, as I said in the intro, when I was a lot younger, I made my own light pen for my GCSE design project, and I made a small little AMOS game to demonstrate it working. Now, back then, I didn't really understand the proper wiring for an Amiga light pen, so I made an educated guess from the manual that came with the machine. I've actually found the AMOS source code that I created back then, which included a simple menu and a basic game of Pong. The AMOS program I wrote would wait in a loop, waiting for the fire button to be depressed, and then read the current Y beam position using the AMOS craft extension. This is kind of the opposite way to the way the beam detection should work, but it works. I've quickly mocked up a light pen circuit that roughly matches how the code says that it's supposed to work. Yeah, I know it's a little bit hacky, but I can use it to play my Pong game. I'm not very good at it, mind you, and I'm not sure exactly where I stole that music from either. But with a small change to the code, it now works with the light gun too. Kind of cool, if a little bit weird. As I said, that's not actually how you're supposed to do this on the Amiga. I learned that much later on. And if, like me, you like learning new things, then I'd like to introduce you to this video's sponsor, Brilliant. And what I really like about Brilliant is you learn by doing it, with thousands of interactive lessons covering maths, programming, data analysis, and AI. 
The courses that Brilliant provide help you improve your critical thinking skills by using an interactive problem-solving approach. You're not just memorising information, you're actually putting it into practice, which helps you understand it more clearly and in the end helps you become a better thinker. Brilliant allows you to build real knowledge in just minutes a day by breaking these courses down into small manageable lessons, making completing them really easy. The growing number of programming courses that Brilliant have to offer is an excellent way to learn how to build real-world applications. If you're a complete beginner or need a refresher, you can start by learning the essentials from variables and loops to nesting and conditionals. And you can learn these essential principles in a completely no-code conceptual way. As you progress through these lessons, you'll develop your mind to think more like a programmer and start to begin writing more complex programs to build apps and even games. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash robsmithdev, scan the QR code or follow the link in the video description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So, on to the light gun, which as you've probably worked out by now, operates in a very similar manner. I'm going to open this up so we can take a peek inside and see if there's any circuitry. Well, it's got four screws to undo and the fourth is hidden under this peeling label. Once that's done, it's simply the process of gently prising this apart. It's actually surprisingly hard to do this, it's a real tight fit. It's not glued, well, except for the glue where the cable goes in, but that shouldn't be there. And finally, we're in. We have a micro switch, which will be used for the trigger, a lens and a small PCB. I'm going to pop that PCB out and take a closer look at it. Interesting, at a quick glance, maybe a little bit of power stabilisation, a little filtering and a simple amplifier. Let's reverse engineer it. There we go. Starts off with the photodiode providing the input and then only detecting pulses using the capacitors to block DC. The signal is then amplified in three stages before being sent on the white wire to pin 6. I wasn't entirely sure if this arrangement of transistors was also forming a basic Schmidt trigger. Pin 6 on the Amiga is the fire button, but also this pin has another function, it's called beam trigger. The Amiga has hardware to support the light pen and it connects straight into the Agnes chip. A fun fact here, the original Amiga 1000 could only use the light pen from the first port, where the mouse was. Later on, they moved this to the second port, as you can see in the schematic. We'll have a look at how the Amiga's hardware does this later on. But first, let's take a closer look at the light pen. Well, I was actually unable to get this apart, I suspect it's just full of glue. But all it probably contains is just the photodiode anyway. The plug, however, well... That contains a few components. At a quick glance, a resistor and a transistor, but on closer inspection, after removing the case, that's not a transistor at all. According to the datasheet, it's a Wilson current mirror. And I have to admit, I haven't seen one of these before. The circuit for this is very simple, although I have to admit, I have no idea what the circuit symbol for that current mirror is. Everything appears to be going to the correct pins for use on the Amiga, although that doesn't mean this will work. It's probably supposed to be used with the Commodore 64, which also has hardware support for light pens. Taking a look at the pinout from the Amiga's joystick ports and comparing it to the two circuits we have, you can see that both use the beam trigger pin for the light pen. It's interesting none of these use the light pen pen press option. And one more other interesting thing is the trigger on the light gun is wired up to the left joystick direction. I've heard, and I've seen it in the WinUAE release notes, that if you try to use a non-Trojan light gun with their games, the game will crash the moment you pull the trigger button, because I suspect other light guns don't wire it up to the left direction. See, they're not actually that different. They do, however, need something to be on screen to be detected in the first place. This is why, if you look closely at me playing this game, you'll see that the screen very briefly flashes to white every time I pull the trigger. Now, there's a few other ways this can be done. In fact, there's a much easier method. Some would even call it a little sneaky, and it was used in 1984 by the Nintendo game Duck Hunt. With this game, when you pull the trigger, the screen goes black except for a small white box where the target is. And as this is the only part of the screen illuminated, it means that if the sensor detects light, you must be aiming at this square. Sneaky, right? Well, I'm sure it made the electronics and programming much easier. Anyway, onto something more interesting. When I wrote my original Amos program for my homemade light pen, I couldn't understand how you could catch the beam position so accurately. Times have changed, however, and all the information I could possibly want is now available on the internet. So I thought I'd have another go at this. And, well, it's not that difficult, and what's more, it requires very little CPU to make it actually work. Given that we already know that the light pen signal gets fed into the Agnes chip, 
it should come as no surprise that the light pen input is captured there. So let's start with the BPLCON0 register. Looking at bit 3 of the BPLCON0 register, you can see it's labelled L pen, and according to this note, this enables the light pen. Now, reading the beam position is handled by two more registers, VPOSR and VHPOSR. And now we know the registers, the actual sequence to find the position of the light pen on screen can be obtained using the following instructions. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, it's actually not that complex. One last one, the BeamCon0 register. This register is only found in the later Agnus chips, and there's an entry related to light pens here as well. Eager to try this out, I installed the VS Code Amiga debug extension and started hacking the example. I started with this function to capture the light pen position. I then screwed around with the copper list to add the L pen bit to the BPL Con0 register. I then hacked the main loop to blit an icon to the screen where the light pen or light gun is. Yeah I know, the code is a complete mess, but remember I did just hack that demo together from the one that comes with the Visual Studio extension. It's worth noting here that WinUAE does actually allow you to simulate a light pen and light gun too. But the best bit is, it actually works. Sure, it doesn't go to the edges, but there's some calibration needed anyway. Plus, the way I'm blitting that image to the screen is probably totally wrong. Whilst browsing Aminet, I happened to stumble across a small utility for Workbench to allow it to use a light pen as an input device. So I downloaded it and gave it a try. And as you can see, it works really, really well with the light gun. The mouse pointer is moving as it should, although the calibration is a little off. The light pen, however, well, yeah, that's still not working at all. But I had a hunch that maybe it's just logic levels or something. So I've temporarily unsoldered the pull-up resistor in the plug and tried again. And, well, it's kind of working, it's not perfect, but this probably proves that this wasn't really designed to be used with the Amiga. Interesting, though. Well, that was fun. Sadly, there weren't many games available for the Amiga that would use the light gun, and the games that do exist aren't exactly what I would call AAA action shooters either. Still, a very interesting technology. Now, there are at least a few modern light guns available that do work on LCD screens, which is fantastic. At least you can still have fun playing these types of games on a more modern display. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.